Hi guys, welcome! I'm Sandy and this video is for all my fellow beginner watercolor artists out there because when we're just starting out it can get really tiresome to keep practicing and not liking anything we do. It's like we've worked so hard and have nothing to show for it. Sometimes we just want to paint something amazing. <laughs> you know, something we can look at and feel proud of. That's it! Something that shows our hard work has paid off. And that is exactly what we're going to do today. So, if you're a beginner level watercolor artist and want to paint something awesome, regardless of how far along you are, this one is for you. Let's get to it. Okay, and this is what we'll be using. My lovely Kuretaki Gansai Tanbi Art Nouveau. <laughs> I am a little bit obsessed with it, not gonna lie. These paints are gorgeous, you know, pastels, muted, soft, lovely. And if I'm honest, since I've gotten these, all I wanted to do is paint with them. So I have given all my other watercolor sets a break and have been having a blast with this one. Now, I know this one is sold out in most places. Some of you have ordered this set and are patiently waiting for it to arrive. So hang in there because it is well worth it. And as soon as Amazon stocks it, I will be posting a link in the description for you. Now, we will also be using my Academy paper right here for this project. It is a small size and I like it that way. Because I think large sheets of paper can be really intimidating when you're first starting out, you know? So small is good, really good. <laughs> and by the way, I have reviewed this watercolor set and this paper, so I'll just leave a link in the description for you to check out after this one, okay? So by now you may be wondering, how is it that a beginner watercolor artist or hobbyist is going to paint something awesome just like that? Well, it is all a matter of planning and a couple of tricks. <laughs> This isn't even my dog. And no, we're not using any line art and just paint over it. Today we are drawing and painting something awesome. Simple, but really, really awesome. <laughs> a vase. Vase? Vase? <laughs> okay, a vase of magical, multicolored daisies. <laughs> now, you can choose other colors, other supplies, other flower arrangements. It is your painting. You decide, okay? I'm just going to show you how to do it and the rest is up to you. And I can tell you right now, you will be blown away by how easy this is. <laughs> so, first thing we need to know is our own limits. Now, since we're first starting out, we aren't very consistent. And that means that when we're free painting a flower, some days it will look perfect and some days it won't. <laughs> so, the question here is, how do we bypass that and make sure all our paintings look perfect. We draw it first with a pencil or a mechanical pencil so we can erase and try again as many times as we want. Now you will want, you know, the thinnest, softest line you can draw when you're making watercolor line art, but for this that's not even a requirement because once we're done painting we'll draw all our outside lines with a drawing pen. You know, for me, I personally love that look. I think it covers all sins and it's also visually much more exciting, really. It is a matter of personal taste, of course, but if you're just starting out, you know, you can use any help you can get, really. So we get our pencil and a regular sheet of paper and we just draw our daisy-like flowers in all sizes and perspectives, okay? So here we go. So basically you have you know, a circle and then you just draw some petals and you can make them higher you can make them chubbier, you can mix and match because, you know, flowers are not perfect or, well, they're perfect, but they're not symmetrical in the slightest. And there you go, your first flower. You can make as many petals as you'd like. For example, you can make more petals. See, this is a big one. I would need to oops, erase it and just redo it and that's why we're using the pencil instead of just making the flowers as we go along. Then for example we can have some you know, fallen ones with three or four petals, maybe three is best. Uh, we can have you know tinier ones, two, three, four and five. Again, good thing we're drawing pencil like that. When we have a flower like this we're looking straight at it, right? But it doesn't need to be that way. We can just, you know, instead of a circle do something like this 
and these just be tinier for example or the other way around we can do like this and just do them tinier you know get all sorts of different perspectives okay so these are the shapes we'll be using for our flowers and as far as the leaves go daisies usually have these like thin pointy leaves it's not really leaves is it of like something like this I think so no need for leaves today lucky us you just get a really really thin brush and we we do a few greens such as these okay time to roll out our watercolor paper and now we're going to draw the vase the vase I don't know how to say it <laughs> so you can make it like rounder or you can make it straighter you know it really is up to you uh, I think I'm going to make this one straight you know with a round bottom just because it's easier to get right now I won't be measuring to you know to center this not at all I'm just going to draw two somewhat parallel lines I'm going to round up the bottom like so didn't round it enough so the bottom was a little bit weird Okay, so we've made the bottom, now we make the waterline somewhat up here, and there we have it. Before we're done here, we also need to add a little shadow. Just like so, you can make it bigger or smaller, it really depends on uh, how much light you imagine it's being you know, cast over this. I also like to add some white spots. Like that you know these are going to remain total white and that's where the you know the light is cast okay now that we're done with this step it's time to start distributing our flowers now you don't want to overcrowd it but you want it to look nice and full too okay so let's just give it a try I would pick like three four five bigger flowers like one over here that's not very big one over here that's better one over here. Now these are daisies. Daisies aren't really that big. Something like this. So you know the petals don't need to fill the entire space. Like I said, you know, it can go over to over it too, just like I'm doing. Now don't worry about your lines, if they're too thick, like I said, we will be using you know, a pen to draw over all our lines, so there's really no point in erasing them and making them softer, because we won't need to. And that is a pretty good thing for us beginners. One more. Like I said, doesn't need to be perfect, you just need to like it. And also, you know, don't get discouraged, okay? You would be surprised how many times I have painted something and thought it would look awful, that it was beyond saving. <laughs> and then, guess what? I kept going up until the final, final step, you know, the pen outlining all our lines and it was only at that stage that I managed to see how great it would turn out. So don't give up, just keep going, give yourself some leverage and it will all be worth it. Okay, now if you want, just keep making those circles and then filling them with petals. I am feeling confident enough to start drawing flowers <laughs> just as they are. Now you want some to overlap, like for example, something like this. Give it a try if you feel it's too complicated, 
don't do it you know you don't need to do anything you're not comfortable with and we have these tiny ones that we are going to use to fill up the spaces again we want it full not too crowded but nice and full and you know filled with color Yeah, okay guys, I am pretty happy with that. Sometimes it's actually hard to know when to stop, uh, so just pace yourself, okay? <laughs> now for our colors, let me just get this one here. We have these awesome, lovely 24 colors to work with and we will be using quite a lot of them. Here is my new and improved swatch card, by the way. <laughs> the one I showed you on the video was rubbish, I know. <laughs> now, as I have told you, Kuretaki Gansai Tambi paints aren't really meant to be mixed, so you have to be very careful or do a lot of experiments to know which can be mixed without getting muddy. Today, I am mixing a couple to show you it can be done, and because I think this painting will look even better if I do. Now, if color mixing scares you, and that's perfectly normal, uh, a safer way to mix colors is to do it on the paint. So instead of mixing it on a tray and using it already mixed, we add one wet color to our page and then before it dries, we add another and they sort of blend. You know, Kuretake Gansai Tembu paints don't blend as well as others and you will know what I mean when I add shadows to our flowers, but it is still totally possible. Let me get this mixing tray and see what I want to mix here. Um, I definitely want to make this saffron yellow darker. So I'm just going to add a little green gold to it, make it even more muted, more moody, <laughs> maybe is the right word. Let's see, just make it, yeah. It's like an olive yellow. I don't know if you can call it that. Let me just try this one real quick yeah look at that it's not the saffron yellow but it's not the green gold either and I think that really works it's just a really deep olive oily kind of yellow that I love I also want to do something to this vermilion over here some pink make it a little yeah that's it I love that Kind of a salmon kind of color look at that that's beautiful so as you can see we're blending it's good it's not you know muddy at all it's working out pretty great I think this pea green is a little bit too light for the look I'm looking for but I want all sorts of greens so I'm just going to add hmm, maybe shadow green to it just a little bit to make it moodier it's too bright you don't want that brightness oh look at that yeah that's pretty perfect okay i think these three are lovely lovely additions to our color scheme i am happy with that now we can start 
painting with all these colors plus these three. Now, the number one thing to know here is always start with the lighter colors, okay? First layer, light, and then with darken with the other layers, if that's what you want. You know, you can go light to dark, you cannot go dark to light, not on watercolors, so keep that in mind, okay? And if I'm honest, I use round brushes for pretty much everything. <laughs> it's the size that varies, not the shape. I own several kinds of brushes, but this is the one I work best with. And from what I see, that changes from person to person. So just try a couple of different brushes and see how it goes, you know, see what works for you. <laughs> and I always, always use synthetic brushes because they're cheaper and don't explore animals. So win-win. <laughs> Another thing to keep in mind, we, are, we will not be doing anything too extraordinary or lifelike here, okay? We want to play with cute colors, do a little shading to feel fancy, <laughs> and end up with something we can look at and smile, because it's looking pretty darn good. Okay? Here we go.
Okay guys, our flowers are all painted, I think I didn't miss any. Uh, and now we move on to our greenery, if you will. And for this I am using the thinnest brush I own, which is this Princeton brush over here. It's really tiny, it makes, you know, really thin lines. Uh, yes, a round brush, if you put it, you know, uh, vertically like this and you apply very little pressure will do very thin lines too, but I am not a subtle kind of girl. I am heavy-handed, so I needed one of these. <laughs> Okay, I am using all the greens at my disposal, except uh, cobalt green. No, except billiard green, actually, because that's the one I'll be using for the gloss, you know, for the vase, vase. <laughs> but other than that, they're all fair game. So here we go. See how it's filling up guys, how it's getting more and more fluffy, <laughs> how it's getting more and more full, which is exactly what we want here. We have these buttons, but we can definitely get smaller buttons to fill in these spots, okay? So we go back to our colors and we live and we just spread these tiny little dots all around, okay? Let's see what else. Tiny. Little that doesn't look like much, but it really will fill up the space beautifully. It's like it's in the back of the painting, you know, like you have these tiny buttons that you can't really see because the flowers are in the way, but you can definitely see the color. But can you see how much easier this all got just because we drew the flowers before we painted them? So yeah, always, always draw whatever it is you're going to paint before you add the color, okay? It just makes your life so much easier. And that's what we want, easy life for ourselves. <laughs> because, you know, because we drew, we knew where to go, we knew when to stop, it was all under our control at all times. I mean, it is complicated enough to have to deal with the amount of water we use and making sure the colors don't bleed and that we keep within the lines and all that, having to make dozens of perfect little flowers every time without any guidance is a lot to ask, you know, from a beginner watercolor artist, in my opinion. And there's really no point to that. Okay, so this is a glass vase, vase, <laughs> and we want to play with that little green glass shading that is so beautiful, and we want to make sure it's not all the same color, okay? So when you look at a colored glass filled with water, for example, and the sun is shining on it, there's all sorts of tones and values and shadows and all those things we want to make sure we have here, okay? And what we do is we add more paint to one side and less paint to the other side and maybe we leave a couple of white parts in the middle. Let's give it a try and see how it goes. Now I'm getting my big brush for this. The color of my glass is the billiard green, for sure. It is a lovely, lovely color for our glass. So first I should have done this with a thinner brush, but that's okay. 
Let's go down here. Don't worry guys, it will look better. It will look much better before we're done. And as you can see, Koretake Gansai Tambi paints aren't paints that lose a lot of, um, of its vibrancy once they dry. A lot of watercolors, I would say most watercolors do that, right? They just lose its vibrancy and you know when you're painting that if you're getting a certain shade, once it dries, it will be a lot lighter. Not with those. Well, not with these. <laughs> these remain vibrant. They do not fade. So keep that in mind. If you're used to working with regular watercolors and you're adding on the paint because you think it will lighten up, it won't. Now I kind of like leaving it like this. You know, I'm not filling it all the way. I'm not adding extra water. I like that it ends with a dry on dry. I think it looks shadier this way. <laughs> More natural, you know, less controlled. Okay, almost there guys. Our next step is to add the stamps, which are essentially straight lines. But this isn't as easy as it sounds, not to me at least, because doing this wrong can really mess up your painting just like that. So first, this needs to be dry and it's not. I'll need a little bit more time or my heat gun. But anyway, in pretty flower arrangements, the stems are sort of entwined, you know, like when you put a bunch of spaghetti in a pot, so larger at the top and at the bottom, and they meet halfway. For this, we want them to meet at the water level, you know, when we made this uh, line right here, this is where they meet. And we want to keep our stems nice and thin. We want them to be, uh, you know, enough to hold all these flowers, even though some stems have more than one flower, so keep that in mind. Okay, I think we can get away with the stems. So we want them to meet here, and we don't want them to go uh, lower than this, because this is the bottom of our face. We need a dark, I'm using my thin brush, we need a darker color, so I think I'm going to go with Mm, Venetian red or yellow brown maybe yeah yellow brown I think may work we could do you know several colors so something like this no, already it is not meeting at water level but that's okay it's a little bit down I'm okay with that It's not doing the spaghetti effect I wanted. I'll just add a few more and be done with that and go practice some more <laughs> for our next video to make sure I do this better. Now, we could just leave this as is. It's looking gorgeous, uh, but, um, you know, we could just, just leave... Now, we could just leave this as is and just add the line and be done with it, but I think we can add a little bit of a color frame, if you will, you know, something that would make these colors pop. And we happen to have this really cute, uh, I think, pale aqua color right here that I think will look perfect. And Kuretake isn't really known to be particularly good for wet on wet, but let's see how we do, okay? We're not going too overboard with this. Not at all, we don't want to ruin all our hard work. We'll do our best not to touch anything we've painted because we don't want to reactivate the colors and these colors reactivate like crazy. So we really want to be careful about this. But yeah, I think we need an extra spot of color here. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. You know, watercolor sometimes is about knowing when to quit, and I clearly don't. <laughs> Thank you. 
yeah, I like it. What do you think? I think it was a good, I think it was a good addition. So this is the pen I'm going to use. It's a Micron uh, number eight. You can do a number five. I do a number five a lot. It's a thinner uh, line and it works perfect too. But today I feel like I need a thicker line for this one. You can use any pen really, as long as your paint is dry. You don't need, you know, you don't need waterproof pens. As long as the paint is dry, you can use any pen. So are you ready? Let's doodle. Now about the doodling, there are no wrong moves, okay? You don't need to follow the lines. You can go back and go over the line as many times as you want. You can do whatever you want. You can add some flowers, whatever feels right to you, okay? This is fun. This is about letting go. And you can, you know, put a line on everything or just a bigger flowers or all the flowers and the greenery and the vase, vase, whatever. It's your call. Let's see how we do it. And this is pretty much it guys. Our watercolor painting is complete and as you can see there was nothing to it. I mean anyone can do this, right? You saw how easy it was to make. Give it a try and let me know how it went. You will have the best time doing this. I guarantee. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me company and I will see you really really soon. Bye bye!